just just after this class so that they can go over whatever they must have missed out. So I'm going to start. Is that okay? So tonight we are going to be treating introduction to Forex. My name, my name is <laughs> Shat Godin. Now, Dory, during the course of this lecture, you're probably going to know the reason why I'm called the Shat Goddess. <laughs> And um, I'm going to be taking you on a journey tonight. I hope you're ready. So just before I start, I would love you all to get to know me. So um, just like I said earlier, my name is Shat Goddess and I've been studying graphs, P and ID since 2018, that's about four years now. Um, and I am also an alumni of Forex Apprenticeship Program. And also, currently, I'm now a staff of Dove Lights FX and HF Africa with four years of short experience. So I believe that's enough for an intro already. <laughs> so I don't want to spend the night talking about myself. I just want to get started already. Um, um, But can you guys still hear me? <laughs> Just to confirm you hearing me, please, before I kick off already. Okay, so this is um, the table of content of what we are going to be treating tonight. So tonight we are going to be talking about what is Forex? How do you trade Forex? When? Can you trade Forex? Who trades Forex? Why trade Forex? And then an introduction to margin trading. Now, um, these are very important um, questions that one should ask, mostly if you are a beginner trader or an intermediate trader. These are um, very basic stuff that you should know. And this, like, if you start off trading without getting to know these things, that some persons might see as too basic. If you start off trading without getting to know these basic things, um, you're going to encounter a little difficulty um, in your trading journey because these are very key things that one must take note of before any other thing, you understand? You have to start from the basic things first before you transcend to the more complicated stuff, to the more complex things. And that is the reason why we are going to be starting with this. So now I do believe that most of you, um, you've been trading, probably you have um, a little experience trading. So I don't want you to see this as um, a waste of your time, um, maybe because you already have the knowledge of it, you understand. So I just want you to, um, um, get to see this as what, what is the right word to use now you understand regardless of the fact if you already know these things before um some persons i believe that this audience is made up of those who have an idea about trading and those who do not you understand so for those who do not welcome this this is going to be the first time we'll be hearing some terms some things what right? for those um who already have an idea you still have to stick with me because there is still a lot you're going to learn from this session all right, so let's kick off already. Let's kick off already. What is Forex? Ta-da! <laughs> what is Forex? The big question. Now, this is actually the most important question because funny enough, a lot of people um, call themselves traders. <laughs> Um, a lot of people call themselves traders, but most of them do not actually know what they are doing, you understand, because they have actually missed it from the start. Now, I'll define what Forex is to you, and I promise I'm going to try to use the simplest of terms to explain what Forex is to you, and I'm going to try to use the most basic analogies so that you will be able to follow through whatever I'm saying tonight. So reading from my slide, 
Forex trading is a simultaneous buying of one currency and selling of another. Now, um, although the, although the um, definition here is self-explanatory, but I will still throw more light on it. Now, um, how many of you, how many of you have been to, um, okay, how many of you know what the real exchange is? Or how many of you have actually done transaction? Okay, let me break it down. How many of you have done transaction with all these Aboki men that usually exchange money? If you have, please, let me see your hands up. Or just type one. <laughs> if you have, just type one. Okay. I hope I'm not too fast to, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to make sure I'm able to keep to time because I know we have a lot to cover tonight. All right, all right. Okay, I can see a lot of one, 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 one. Good. That tells me that um, majority of you have actually done transaction with um, those aboki men, so to say. That's the best way to explain it now. Um, okay, so like that is basically what forex trading is you understand you know how that works that you have a particular currency of a country and then you go to them to exchange it to another currency you understand now since you are in nigeria so it's most likely that maybe you want to convert other currencies to our currency to naira maybe you want to convert your dollar to naira euro to naira or any other currency you understand. So that is basically what Forex trading is, an exchange of currencies, you understand? The buying of one currency, because what you're doing at that point is actually buying and selling. For instance, now, if it was um, US dollar that you wanted to exchange for Naira, and then you give the aboki, <laughs> it's funny when I use that word though, and then you give the aboki man your dollar, you're actually, it's more like you're selling to him. And then when he gives you Naira, it, you bought the Naira from him. You understand? That means for every buying, there is a selling. You understand? And in the same light, for every selling, there is a buying. You understand? Yeah. So that is basically what Forex is. The simultaneous buying of one currency and the selling of another. All right. So reading my slide now. Currencies are traded through a broker or a dealer and are traded in pairs. Okay, let me explain that now. Um, although you're going to get to learn more about brokers and dealers later on um, doing this mentorship um, program, but then just to throw a little light on it, um, a broker, now let me explain this. Um, you know, just like the conventional trading, now I'm talking about the outside world of normal buying and selling. Um, you know, um, like there is a marketplace. There is a place where if you want to buy rice, for instance, you know where you have to go to to get rice. If you want to buy beans or any other thing, you know, there is a market for it. There is a place you have to go to for this transaction to happen. You understand? But now in Forex, um, the, the broker is more like an intermediate between you and the market because you, you cannot see the market, you understand? So the um, forex market is electronically run, so you can only transact through a broker. So the broker is more like an intermediate between the trader and the market. So currencies are traded through a broker or a dealer, and they are traded in pairs. For example, the euro and US dollar, euro USD or the British pound and the Japanese yen. Now, I'm going to throw more light on that. I, I want you to know, it's worthy of note for you to know that currencies are always in pair. Why? Because just from our definition, you can see that it's the simultaneous buying of one currency and selling of another or vice versa. You understand? Now, because trading, forex trading is two-sided. You understand? Because it is two-sided, that is the reason why currencies are always paired because you're buying one and selling off the other or you're selling off one and buying the other. You understand? So it, it, it's, 
it consists of two, the, you're buying and selling, therefore the currencies has to be paired in two. You understand? Selling off one by simultaneously buying the other. I hope you get up to that point. I hope you understand up to that point. You get. Now, um, let's move ahead. How do you trade Forex? Um, now, before I go on to how to trade Forex, I want to throw a little light on this pairing of currencies. Now, we all know, or if you do not know, it's worthy of note for you to know that Forex is the biggest financial market in the world, like the most traded in the world. It transacts over about $6 trillion daily. That is to show you how big, how big the market is. You understand? Now, regardless of this, um, regardless of the size of Forex, there are certain countries whose currencies are majorly traded in the foreign in the forex markets. You understand? Some of these countries include Britain. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that on any slide here, but you could just take that down. I believe you should be with a pen and a paper. So some of the major countries include Britain, London, Canada, and a whole like, um, and other likes of them. There are about eight, you understand? And now these different eight countries, they have the unit of their currency, just like in Nigeria now, Naira is the unit of our currency. So they have the unit of their currency. For instance, Australia, the, the unit of their currency is Australian dollar, you understand? The unit of their currency is Australian dollar. So in Forex, you see it abbreviated to AUD. Now, the first two later actually stands for the country that pair represents, while the last letter stands for the unit of the currency. You understand? For instance, you see it's written AUD. The first AU stands for Australia, while the last D stands for dollar. You understand? So we have the likes of AUD, we have USD, you know, US stands for the US, and then the D stands for the dollar, US dollar, you understand? And then we have Great Britain pound and others. They are about eight. Now, these eight different countries, they have their currencies. Now we have what is called the major currencies, minor currencies, and then the exotic pairs. You understand. I'm trying to break this down um, just before I explain how you trade forex so that you don't get confused. You understand. Now, um, these currencies, uh, major currency pairs are pairs that are paired together with the US dollar. Now, I told you that there are about eight major currencies. You understand. There are like eight major currencies that are traded in forex. Um, and now the ma major currency pairs are pairs, are uh, um, currencies that are paired with the US dollar because in Forex, the dollar is regarded to be the king of the market, like dollar is king, you understand? Just like the lion is the king of the jungle. In this Forex market, US dollar is king, you understand? So it's more like saying you're pairing someone with the king, man, that is major, you understand? So when you see a currency pair, when you see um, any of this eight, um, now seven now, because US dollar is out since it's the king. So any of those other seven currencies paired with the US dollar is regarded to as a major currency pair. You understand? While um, now taking the US dollar out, more like taking the king out, um, when you pair any other two of the remaining seven major currencies, you get the minor currency pairs. You understand? That is where you get to see um, the likes of um, AUD, NZD, GBP, NZD, other pairs like that. You understand? And then exotic pairs. Exotic pairs is people don't really trade exotic pairs, but exotic pairs rather. But just to explain it, exotic pair um, is when any of these major countries currencies is paired with the currency of um emerging economy you understand you know nigeria we are just imagine we are just starting out life so it's more like saying you're pairing usd and ngn that is an exotic pair you understand because us dollar is a major currency and then the ngn nigeria naira is 
um, the currency of an emerging country in Nigeria. All right, let's run. I think I've talked enough, um, and I believe you understand. I believe, please, you understand up to this point, type one. You know, it's not necessarily about the pace. I don't want to be too fast, and then at the end of the day, you don't get to understand or learn anything then purpose of this class will be defeated. So please, if you've understood to this point, type one, just before I go ahead, please. Please, please, please type one if you've understood to this point. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I can see. All right, okay, that means I can go on now, thank you. So how do you trade Forex? Now, you now know that our product is Forex. Yeah, just like in the conventional market, like I talked, like I talked about earlier, you, you know that um, um, if you're selling rice, if you're a rice trader, your product is rice, right? Yeah, if you're a yam trader, your product is yam. You understand? So you're trading, but it's, now the only thing that differentiates us from other traders is our product, what we trade. Now, what we trade in forest market is money. <laughs> I know someone likes the sound of that. Now, money is what we trade. Money is our product. You understand? So now, how do you trade Forex? Reading from my slide, the objective of trading is to exchange one currency for another, we already know, in the expectation that the price will change. Accurate. So that the currency you bought will increase in value compared to the one you sold. This happens through what is called an exchange rate. Now, this is just normal conventional wisdom. You understand? Now, for instance, if you, if you are in the business of buying and selling, let's take Forex out of this now. If you are in the business of buying and selling, you're there to make money, right? Certainly. Uh, what is the aim? For instance, if you buy something at um 50 naira your expectation is that when that thing increases in price you get to sell it off and then you make profit right that is just how it is in forex you understand now the aim of this the aim of trading is to make money there is no one that enters into this market with the intention of losing you understand so um um Price trading is the exchange of one currency for another in expectation that the price, uh -huh, the one you bought to increase in value. You understand? Yeah, so um, let me, let us get to um, the example I have down here. Said so this happens through what is called an exchange rate. Now, um, let me explain what an exchange rate is in the most basic way that I can. You understand? Now, an exchange rate is um, simply defined as the value of one currency that is needed or required to get a unit of another currency. You understand? The value of one currency that is needed or required to get a unit of another currency. That is basically, in the most basic way, what an exchange rate is. You I believe most of you are conversant with exchange rates because you've been seeing it play out in the um, Naira and dollar. You understand? And when you get to yeah, currently now, what is the current what is the current exchange rate for naira to dollar? What is the, I'm asking? What is the current exchange rate? I believe you are you are all current. What is the what is the current exchange rate of naira to dollar? Anyone? Five hundred. Okay. You see, that means you have a clue of what I'm saying. You understand now. What that simply means is that you need at least. You need 500 naira to get one dollar. You understand? That means the, the, the amount, the figure, the quantity of one currency needed to get a unit of another currency. You understand? Now, using this dollar naira scenario, you need 500 naira to get one dollar. And at a point, it was actually lesser. At a point, it was about three something, 360 or thereabouts. You understand? At a point, it was three something, and now it's five hundred. Now, just imagine, imagine you bought. Um, imagine when the exchange rate was about three sixty, you start up, you start up dollar. Just imagine in your imagination. I know, I know, most of you did not, but just try to imagine that when the exchange rate was lesser, about three sixty. Just imagine that you start up dollar, and now the exchange rate is one to five hundred. You know how much profit you've made. 
You understand? So that is just how Forex works. You understand? We're just yet to make money. We get to buy when we know that the value of what we are buying is going to increase over time. And we get to sell off when we know. Don't worry, during the course of this mentorship session, you're going to know accurately when to buy and when to sell. You understand? We buy when we know the value is going to increase and we sell up when we know that the value is going to depreciate. You understand? So now let's take this example I have here. Example one, you purchased 10,000 euros at the exchange rate of 1.1800. Two weeks later, you exchange your 10,000 euros back to US dollar at the exchange rate of 1.2500, what is your profit? Now, this might look as though it's hard. It's just because it's grammar. It's really not. Now, let's try to solve this. But first of all, let me explain what this first line is. You purchase 10,000 euros at the exchange rate of 1.800. Now, I want to go ahead of myself for the purpose of what I'm about to explain now. So please look up. Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. Please pay attention now. Now, for instance, I told you in Forex, um, currencies are always paired, right? I told you currencies are always in twos. That is one slash another. One. You see them in twos, you understand? That is how currencies are quoted in Forex. So now when you see a currency like this, let's take, for instance, this what, what we're seeing now, GPP USD. GPP USD. You, you can all see my screen, right? Now, let's take, for instance, GPP USD. When you see an exchange rate and you see a pair, what it simply means is that you need one, you need a, you need a certain unit of one to get another. Don't worry, I will explain. I'm getting somewhere. I want to take it slowly. Now, GBP, just look, you'll see my screen now. The first currency to be quoted is called the base currency, right? The first currency to be quoted is called the base currency while the second currency is always called the quote currency you understand so when you see when you see two pairs you, you're not you will not be confused you know that the first one is always the base currency the second is always the quote currency note that now when you see an exchange rate it simply means you need that quantity whatever the exchange rate is you understand? It means you need a quantity of the quote currency to get one unit of the base currency. You understand? Now, for instance, we see GBP slash USD equal to 1.51258. To explain this, it simply means you need 1.51258 of USD to get one unit of GBP. Do you understand? That is, that is how to interpret Forex quotes when you see them with the exchange rates. You understand? For instance, a pair like USD NGN, the current um, exchange rate, just like you all said, is 500. USD NGN. From these quotes, you can, you can tell that the first currency, which is USD, is the base currency, while NGN is the quote currency. You understand? Now, USD NGN equals to 500, meaning you need 500 units of NGN to get one unit of USD. Do you understand? Do you understand to that point? If you understand, please type one. I want to go back to where we were just before I jump to this point. If you understood, please type one. Thank you. I can see. One, 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 good. I'm glad you all understand to this point. Okay, so now, now that you have a knowledge of how to read a, a Forex quote, let's take this question again. You purchased 10,000 euros at the exchange rate of 1.1800. What does it mean? Don't worry, we'll know. Two weeks later, you exchange your 10,000 euros back into USD at the exchange rate of 1.2550. Now, if I was to write if I was to write out this, um, the pairs involved, it's Euro and USD. And it's always written as Euro, USD in the forest market, you understand? 
Euro is bigger, yeah. <laughs> so it's always written as Euro USD. So it's telling us that the exchange rate is 1.1800. That means you need 1.1800 of the bay of the port currency. In this case, now we need we need 1.1800 of the um quote currency to get one unit of the base currency which is euro in this case in this example you understand so now let's look at the uh, calculation let's solve together yeah so let's solve step one i hope you can all see my screen this is calculation part so i would i would really love you all to understand this part you understand so the currency pair Euro USD exchange rate was one point, according to our question, 1.1800, meaning we need 1.1800 USD to get one euro. I believe we all understand. Therefore, therefore, our 10,000 euro is going to be how much? Simply, you put 10,000 times 1.1800 because 10,000 is the quantity you want to buy. You understand? More like saying you want to buy a crate of egg. You understand? So um, um, it's the quantity, 10,000 now in this case, is the quantity of euro that you want to buy, you intend to buy. But then the exchange rate is 1.1800. So 10,000 times the exchange rate will give you the quantity in euro, in USD, I mean. You understand? So um, therefore, 10,000 times 1 point, the exchange rate, which is 1.1800, 1 gave us 11,800 USD. Now, according to our question, two weeks later, <laughs> the exchange rate increased to about 1.2500. And then you exchanged your euro back to USD at the current exchange rate. The same calculation applies. 10,000 times the new exchange rates gave us about 12,500. Therefore, to get our profit, we are going to just subtract what we have now from what we had before. You understand? Like who understands up to this point? And from the calculation, 12,500 minus 11.8 is $700. If you understand, please type one, let me be sure. I really do not want anyone to be confused at this point. Okay, I can say a lot of, okay. That means you understand. Okay, I'm glad you do. So you understand up to this point. So this is basically how we make money in Forex. You understand? So you buy something at a certain price and then wait for the exchange rates to increase in value. And then you sell off what you initially bought. You make profits. You understand? In the same light, in the same light, you bought something and then you knew from your speculations that the price is going to drop. And then you sold that thing when the price was high. When the price, uh, when you sold that thing and then you get to buy it back at a cheaper price. You understand? More like, more like you only get to buy when you know the value will increase and you get to sell when you know the value is going to drop. All, all for the purpose of making money. You understand? Okay, let's move ahead. Oh my God, I'm really looking at time. Let's move ahead. So, know when to buy or sell a currency pair. Before we know when to buy or sell, a currency pair, we must first understand how to read a forex quote. But I believe by now, we all know how to read a forex quote. Yeah, remember I skipped to this point. So I believe by now you understand this already. So currencies are always quoted in pairs. You already know this, such as GPP USD or USD JPY. The reason they are quoted in pairs is because in every foreign exchange transaction, you are simultaneously buying one currency and selling another. I believe you understand to this point. I don't think this needs any explanation. Again, 
because it is self-explanatory and already threw more light on it before. So let's move ahead. Currency to the left of the slash is known as the base currency. Again, you know this. In this example, the British pound, that is this previous example now that we've seen, that we saw here, British pound, in this case, is the base currency. You can see my cursor. British pound is the base currency, while the USD is the post currency. Yeah, so let's just go ahead. You understand? While the second one to the right is called the counter or code currency. You understand? So more, um, if, you look, if you look to the left over here, you're going to see a couple of them. This is how they are quoted in forex. You just see them like this. Most times you see the slash, most times you don't see the slash. You understand? USD CHF, um, now USD, US dollar, CHF, Swiss franc. You understand? GBP USD, Euro USD, USD card, and then others, others. You understand? The first is always the base currency, and the second is the quote currency. So let's move ahead. Let's run along, please. Okay, so Euro USD. So this is to throw more light on what I already said. In this example, the Euro is the base currency and thus the basis for the buy and sell. Okay, what this simply means is if you see a currency pair, if you see a currency pair, for instance, Euro USD, and then you know in Forex, um, there are only two things you can do. You're either buying or selling, nothing more. There are no middle grounds. You understand? You're either buying or you're selling. You understand? Yeah. So when you see a currency pair and you decide on what you want to do, whether you want to buy or you want to sell, it simply means whatever you decide to do is always with respect to the base currency. What do I mean? Now, this means, for instance, you see something like Euro USD, and then you click on buy. It simply means you are buying the base currency and selling off the quote currency. Whatever you do is always with respect to the base currency. You understand? So when you see a pair like USD card and you click on sell, the interpretation of that is you are selling off your USD while simultaneously buying the Canadian dollar. You understand? So in this example, which is Euro USD, reading from my slide now, the Euro is the base currency and thus the basis for the buy and sell. If you believe that the US economy will continue to weaken, which is bad for the US dollar, you would execute a buy on the Euro USD order. By so doing, you have bought Euro in expectation that they will rise versus the US dollar. Remember, we are only buying things because we know that with time is going to increase in value. You understand? You don't want to buy something that is going to dep depreciate in value over time. So when you buy the, U the Euro USD, it means you bought Euro and sold off USD. And that simply means that you've already speculated and you now know that at a later date, Euro is going to um, is going to increase in value compared to the US dollar. You understand? Now, moving ahead, he said, if you believe that the US economy is strong and the euro will and the euro will weaken against the US dollar, you will execute a sell. And that simply means you're selling off your euro while buying USD. You understand? I believe you do. If you understood to this point, please type one. <laughs> please, I want to ensure you're following. I hope you're not tired of typing. I just want to make sure that you're following. I still need more confirmation. So please, if you understood, type one. All right, thank you all. So let's move ahead. Let's run along. When can we trade Forex? This is equally as important as getting to know um, what is Forex and the rest of other questions that we've treated. When can we trade Forex? Because 
is not necessarily about um it's not necessarily about buying or selling one of the major factor that really influences your profitability is when is knowing when to actually trade the market you understand yeah so that's what we're about to treat now so in forex we have four major sessions now when i say session i don't want you to get confused now let me use an example i don't know how many of you are evils here but there is something um, that we usually do like there is a market division that we have it's called on four a k o ray and on four something like that. i don't know <laughs> it's four it's the market cycle you understand i don't know how many of you know about that or are conversant with that but uh, we have this market division that occurs in days it's like four four days intervals or thereabouts i don't really know you understand so that is more like a session that is more like trading session for the evils you understand so they know that we have the ak market day the ORA market day the whatever market day you understand so likewise in forex we have trading session you understand and they are for a number so we have the sydney session we have the asian session i believe you can see my my, my screen we have the london session and we have the new york session now why should you know all of these sessions can't you just come up anytime and place any trade <laughs> Now, it's important for you to get to know this different trading session because different current currency pairs have various volatility rates and it is majorly affected by the trading session. Now, what do I mean? For instance, the Sydney session, there are certain pairs, there are certain pairs that are unique that's the right word to use there are certain pairs unique to the sydney session now that doesn't mean that you cannot trade other currency pairs during this particular session what it just simply means is that um the currencies that are going to be moving the most the currencies that are going to be more liquid and volatile during the sydney session would be the currencies that are unique to this particular session you understand so for instance, the Sydney session, you just have to know this time, this time um, um, differences. The Sydney session opens by 10 p.m. I have to do a GMT plus one. That is our Nigeria time, our time, you understand? So the Sydney session starts by 10 p.m. What's the time? The time is to nine. Okay, so by 10 now, the Sydney session has started. You understand the Sydney session starts by 10 p.m. and closes by 6 a.m. You understand now during the Sydney session, the most traded pairs are usually the um, Australian dollar pairs. You understand maybe the likes of um, um, AUD NZD, what other pair that has Australian dollar in it or NZDs. You understand New Zealand pairs, Australian pairs, and all those pairs are more volatile and more liquid during the Sydney session. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot trade other pairs like USD card or any other pair. You understand? You can trade them, but those pairs would not be as liquid as these pairs, these pairs that are unique to the Sydney session. You understand? So the Sydney session starts by 10, closes by 6 a.m. And the Asian session starts by 12 and closes by 8. Now, the Asian session, most times, most times, the Asian and the Sydney session, they are actually regarded to as one. And when they are regarded to as one, they are called Tokyo session. The reason why most times they are regarded to as one is because they are almost alike. And aside from that, the timing is almost the same. You can see the Sydney starts from 10 and asian starts from 12 so it's more like two hours interval you understand so most times people just tend to regard them as one session but they are not you understand so now the asian session starts by 12 a.m and it closes 
by 8 a.m. You understand? If you notice, if you notice this, I'm going to talk about overlap later. Okay, let me just go ahead. I'll talk about the overlap later. London session. London session starts by 8 and closes by 4. Remember, this is our time now. So you don't need to do any more conversions. I already did it. So 8 a.m. our Nigeria time and closes by 4 p.m. And then New York session starts by 1 p.m. and closes by 10 p.m. Now, overlap. If you notice, if you look at this timing, you will see that there is a point where um, one session will still be open, but then another session will um, open again. Like one session will still be on, and then another session will get to open. That is called an um, overlap. It's called overlapping sessions. You understand? That means one market is open, another market is open. That's more like a combination at the same time, running at the same time. You understand? So if you look at Sydney session now, it opens at 10 p.m. Why the Asian session opened at 12 a.m.? That means from 12 to 6, the Sydney and the Asian session are opened at the same time, running at the same time. You understand? Now, the same thing happened for London. There was also an overlap during the London and the New York session. The London session opens by 8 a.m. to 4 p.m while the New York session opens by 1 p.m. That's, you see that from one to four, the London and New York session, there was an overlap between the London and the New York session. You understand? Now, the pairs that are most liquid during the London session are the um, Euro pairs, you understand? Euro JPY, Euro GBP, Euro, you understand? All these London pairs and stuff. So New York session, USD pairs and you understand USD card, USD, um, GBP USD, USD NZD, like all of this USD pairs, London US. You understand? So the um the best time to trade, um the best thing to do is to trade pairs that are specific to these different sessions. That is going to further increase the level of your profitability. Now remember. Remember, I said that doesn't mean you cannot trade other currency pairs in this session. It just means, man, how can you, how can you, how can you leave a pair that's maybe once that moves 300, for instance, 300 pips in the particular session, and then go and trade a pair that just moves 50 pips? Like it's okay, most of you might not know what pips is, but let's add me this course, you're going to understand what it means. But you get my point. You understand? So this is just for you to get to know. So you could screenshot this or just copy it down for you to get to know the timing, the um, when the different session opens and close. You understand? And I hope you're really following through. Best times to trade. Let me just read out my slide. When two sessions are overlapping. Okay, I already said this before. You know what an overlap is now, right? That is when one, um, um, when one session is still on and then another session gets to open, that means an overlap, two sessions running simultaneously at once. So the, um, the best times to trade are when two sessions are overlapping. These are also the times where major news events come out, potentially spark some volatility and directional movements. All right, that's about that, overlapping. And then the second, first time, European session, uh, this one is subjective though, European session, and then the third, the mid of the week. Yeah, although this has not been proven, this has not been proven, but then most people, most people believe that the best time to trade is middle of the week, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the reason is because Mondays, you know, the market is just opening, the market is just starting, and they feel the market is not settled enough for them to want to take a trade. Likewise, on Fridays, uh, most people think that the market is going to close soon. So they don't want to be, uh, you know, when the market is opening and when the market is just closing, like there used to be this kind of volatility spikes that occur, like you see big, big candlesticks and stuff like that. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm using terms that you don't quite understand yet, but um, I promise during the course of this training, you're going to understand it fully. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is some people believe that the best times to trade are Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays to avoid those volatility spikes that often occurs on Monday and on Friday. So these are actually the best times to trade. For me, overlapping session, you understand? Overlapping session because 
the European session is subjective, while this mid of the week thing is also subjective too. You can decide to take your trade on Monday, depending on what you're seeing, depending on what your analysis is telling you. You understand? So now let's run along. We are running out of time. Who trades Forex? Who trades Forex? All right, let's get to know. Forex market players. Now it's pertinent for you to get to know the people involved <laughs> so that you know who you are up against. You understand? So you get to know who you're up against. So we have four major market players. The first is the super banks. Now, the second is large companies, third, governments and banks, and then lastly, the retail traders. Now, these other ones that fall, the super banks, large companies. Now, the super banks um, is also called the interbank. It's more like um, these are the people that actually determine the exchange rate. You understand? Like the super banks, um, they, they, it's more like a conglomerate of um, large, large banks, you understand, that get together to formulate what the exchange rate is going to be. Then we have the large companies. We have, of course, you're not the only one involved in this market. Now we have large companies like the likes of maybe Microsoft, Apple, and the rest of them. We have government and banks. Of, of, of course, government and banks, they, they, also, they are also market players, you understand, because they actually they are actually determinants of price as well. They are determinants of exchange rates as well. You understand? Yeah. Why do retail traders are people like you and I? Retail traders, like they're just there. <laughs> retail, re, re, um, retail traders are they actually call us retail traders because most likely, most um, because of the quantity, because we trade in small, small quantities. Now, when I say small quantities, I don't want to use large words because I, I would love to explain uh, what buying in large quantities means, like using of high, very large lot sizes and the rest of them. But most of you might not really understand what that means. But just get to know that retail traders are just you and I, people like uh, you and I that just have access to the market. Do you understand? Yeah, we just have access to the market and then we get to trade, buy and sell, small quantity, 10 lot size, 100 lot size. You understand? So we are called retail traders, smaller traders. So these are the forex market players. Just for you to know who you're up against, the super banks, larger companies, governments, banks, and then you, <laughs> the retail traders. All right, let's move along. Oh my God, I'm looking at time. Advantages of trading forex. Now I'm just going to highlight a few advantages of trading forex. So you know the reason why Forex is a blessing, so to say. Yeah, so first of all, the first advantage of trading Forex is that there is no commission. You don't have to pay anyone any form of commission. You understand? Like maybe you get to pay um, things like exchange fees or commission. You know, if, if for instance, if there was a middleman, you would have to pay that person a commission. You understand? Although in Forex, though, it's not like no commission, no commission, but we pay a little commission in a form of spread. You're going to know what spread is during the course of this um, lesson. You're going to know what um, a spread is, but that spread is very negligible. Like it's so small that it's almost insignificant. So it's more like no commission. And at the same time, there is no middleman. You understand? So it's, um, I, I know that back in the days, just before this evolution in the forest market occurred, there used to be a time where um, there was something called floor trading, where if you want to take an order, if you want to place a trade, you have to call someone and tell the person, I want to take this trade, um, so, 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 lot size, place it here, or yeah, yeah. The person will have to be the one to take your order for you and then do the transaction on your behalf. But now there is nothing like that. All you just need is your phone or your laptop, and then you have access to the market through a broker. So it's a very beautiful thing, a very beautiful evolution. So there is no middleman, there is no fixed lot size, and then there is very low cost of transaction. I talked about low cost of transaction when I said something about the spread. 
because the spread is so small to the point that it's almost insignificant. You understand? So very small. Most times, 90 cents. It's never up to $1. Most times, 50 cents, 60 cents, or thereabouts. You understand? Yeah, and it's not fixed. It's dependent on the um, pair that you're trading. So these are just a few advantages of trading Forex markets. I know you want to hear you're going to make big money. <laughs> you're certainly going to make big money. That's one of the advantage of trading Forex. But then these are just a key points to note. So let's move along. We're out of time already. Introduction to margin trading. Okay, at this point, I want to plead with all of you uh, to really to pay rapt attention because this is very critical in your trading career. Having a knowledge of what I'm about to explain is very critical in your trading career. So um, I wouldn't want you to get confused. So I want you to follow me through gradually. So introduction to margin trading. Most of you might have heard about margin trading before. Most of you might have not. So what is margin trading? Reading from my slide. Margin trading is simply the term used for trading with borrowed capital. Margin trading is the term used for trading with borrowed capital. <laughs> I know someone is already jumping. I've seen borrowed capital, you're happy. <laughs> Don't worry, we are going to, let me elaborate more. This is how you are able to open a $1,250 or $50,000 position with as little as $25 or $1,000. Okay, now see what this simply means. Margin trading is a concept in Forex that gives you the ability to trade big positions with very small capital. You understand? Big positions with very small capital. Now, just before I go ahead to explain what margin trading is, I want to throw a little light on something called sizing, lot sizing. You understand? Now, lot sizes, I'm sorry, I don't have that, that on my slide here. By tomorrow or thereabouts, you're going to get to learn about it more, you understand, from other resource persons. So lot size is simply the quantity or unit of the currency that you want to buy. Now, for instance, it's more like saying you cannot go to a supermarket. You can actually go to um, a place and say, I just want to buy one egg. But in Forex, you cannot just come and say, I want to buy one dollar <laughs> or I want to buy one, one pound or something like that. No. You understand now currencies come in pair um, in sizes something called lot that is um um how do i put it down more like so, uh, example now say you want to buy a crate of egg you understand rather than just buying one egg you understand that is lot sizing lot sizing is um the unit or quantity of what you want to buy you understand so we have what is called the micro lot the micro lot is consists of 1000 units that means for instance please follow me gradually for instance you want to buy euro usd remember i said whatever transaction you want to do in forest market is always with respect to the base currency i hope you haven't forgotten that point so let's say now for instance you want to buy euro usd and then you click or you use a micro lot size that means 1000 units it means you want to buy 1000 units of euro you understand yes now we have micro lot 1000 units uh, mini lot 10000 units and then standard lot which is 100000 units you understand now please get this that is just what lot size is. That is, you have to buy, you have to buy these pairs in quantity. You understand? You have to buy it in quantity. It's quantified in the Forex market. And it's quantified in a way called lots, lot sizes. You understand? So lot sizing 
Lot sizes simply tells your broker the quantity you want to buy. You understand? So when you, when you, when you initiate a trade with a mini lot, you're simply telling your broker, I want to buy 10,000 units of this currency. In this case, of course, you know it's the base currency you're talking about here. Yeah, so back to my slide now. I just had to drift a little to explain what lot sizing meant so that you won't get lost. Now, what is margin trading? Remember, it's margin trading we are talking about. This is how you are able to open 1,250 or 50,000 positions with as little as $25 or $1,000. Now, I was, I was trying to explain to you that lot, uh, margin trading is trading with borrowed capital. That means you using, you see people, people that have, now, for instance, imagine I told you standard lot size is 100,000 units. 100,000. Now I'm talking about 100,000 units. For instance, you want to buy, you want to buy euro. Where will you see $100,000? <laughs> you want to initiate a, a trade with a standard lot size. Where will you see $100,000 to come and buy 100,000 units of euro? You understand? You cash it. Now, but because of this concept of margin trading, people were able to do this regardless of their small account balance. This is called margin trading. You can conduct relatively large transactions very quickly and cheaply with a small amount of initial capital. You understand? Judging from this picture I have here, you can see, see your deposit, see how small your deposit is, but then see the buying power you have. You understand? It's more like you're going to a mall. You're going to a mall. Um, you went to a mall with 1,000 naira, but you were able to buy goods worth 10,000. You understand? That's just what margin trading is. You have the ability to do big transactions regardless of your small capital. It's very, it's very, people like it. <laughs> you like the concept. People like the concept, but it's a two edged sword. Like, anyways, we'll talk about that later. Um, let's move ahead. I believe you now know what margin trading is. So to get margin, to get your margin value. Now, let me explain something to you. Margin value, to get margin value is notional value all over leverage. Let me explain what leverage is. Now, um, if by the time you are ready to start trading, and then you get to create your account. Huh? You're going to be made to fill a form. While filling the form, you're going to see a point where they will ask you what leverage do you want. You're going to see various options. You're going to be asked, what leverage do you want? Leverage simply means, um, we are talking about margin trading, and um, that is the ability to trade with borrowed capital, right? Leverage and margin is, they go hand in hand. Leverage in the most simplest form is like, like how much more, like how, what is the right word to use now? Let me read it for me. Leverage is the ratio of the amount of capital used in a transaction to the required security deposit. So now for instance, let's say for instance, um, look at, at my screen, look at this place I have the diagram. We have, look at that point where the wrote leverage. Let me use my cursor so that I can see. You see this place, leverage. We have a variety of options. It's really in ratio form, one ratio, one, two ratio, one, 50 ratio, one. I'm trying to explain leverage now to you. Please um, follow me gradually, slowly, so that you get to understand I don't miss out. Now, for instance, one ratio, one, two ratio, one. What leverage simply means is the um, buying power that they are giving you that your broker is giving you. You understand the level, the extent, the level of the buying power, you understand, regardless of capital. Now, for instance, two ratio one simply means um, no matter your capital, you'll be able to trade times two of whatever your capital is. You understand? That's just what leverage is. For instance, you see something like 50 ratio one, it means you are, you'll, be give, you'll be given the license to trade 50 times of whatever your capital is. That is the most basic way to uh, explain leverage to you now that you understand. You get, for instance, see this 100 ratio one. 
It means you are given the ability to trade 100 times of whatever your capital is. Do you understand? So now, for instance, look at this amount traded. Amount traded, 100,000. So this is more like, this is um, talking about the lot size now, 100,000 units. This is um, a standard lot, right? So for instance, if you, maybe while you're creating your account and then you decided to click on 400 because you saw the large number, you like big numbers, and then you decided to click on 400 ratio one, meaning you have the ability to trade times 400 of, of whatever capital you have. You understand? That's what leverage is. Now, to get to know what margin is, margin means notional value divided by leverage. That is to get margin. Now, margin is simply you know the concept of margin trading, trading with borrowed capital, but then required margin is the amount that is set aside from your trading capital. Do you understand? Required margin is the amount that is set aside from your trading capital, an amount that you should at least have in your account before you are able to take on these positions, before you are able to initiate these transactions. Do you understand? So for instance, now, um, you, for instance, just like I was trying to say earlier, for instance, you while you were creating your account, you clicked on 400 ratio one leverage just because you like big numbers. What this simply means, what this is telling you now, looking at this required margin, you can see $250. It means you need at least $250 to be in your account for you to be able to trade a standard lot size, which is 100,000 units. Can you see the difference? 100,000 units, I want to trade with $250, but that is the power of leverage and margin trading. You understand? Now, this um, one is to one leverage, um, if you want to, if you're giving the one is to one leverage, it means like you need 100,000 to trade this, like it's more as if there is no trading, there is no leverage or there is no, there's no leverage, you understand, like you don't want any leverage, you just want to trade your money, you are big, you are rich enough, you understand, you don't want such buying power, so um, one is to one simply means you need at least 100,000 Hundred thousand dollars to be in your account to be able to trade hundred thousand units. You understand? What two is to one? Two is to one means you need at least fifty thousand dollars. Judging from our calculation, remember notional value. Notional value is simply the quantity traded, amount traded. In this case, now using a standard lot size, which is hundred thousand units. You understand? Which is hundred thousand units. So when you say hundred thousand divided by leverage. In this case, our leverage was one. So 100,000 divided by one gave us 100,000. I hope you're following. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting, are you getting um, what I'm doing? That's what gave us this required margin. So for, for instance, looking at the second example, two is to one. To get the margin, all you have to do is just notional value divided by leverage. In this case, notional value is also 100,000, which is our standard lot size. 100,000 units divided by two, which is the leverage, that is $50,000, meaning you need at least $50,000 to be in your account for, for you to be able to take a standard lot size trade, which is 100,000 units. Do you understand? Am I too fast? I'm sorry, please, if you understand, type one, let me be sure. I don't know if I'm too fast. If you, under, if you understand it already, please type one. Let me confirm, please. Okay, I can see we are all following. Thank you. Yes, that is just what it means. You understand? So this place, this this place you're seeing required margin. That is just telling you the amount that you need in your account at least to be able to trade that particular um, unit of currency. You understand? So now, the notional amount is also known as notional principal or notional value. Is the amount of currency to be sold and bought. I already explained that notional value, just forget the big drama. Notional value is just the unit. You understand? I told you that um, I told you that a micro lot is 1,000 units. So if 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 it was 1,000 units you wanted to trade, maybe you don't you don't really have money that much. You just want to take a smaller, you want to trade a smaller lot size, and you know a, a micro lot size is 1,000 units. 
in this case, you're going to do your calculation yourself to get to know at least the amount that should be in your account before you can take on that trade. Do you understand? I hope we get to this point. Just, just following the calculation, notional value all over leverage. You, you will not the, you know the leverage you. By the time you're getting to create your account, you really want to select the leverage. Like leverage is not imposed on anyone. You understand? So if you're creating your account, most people will decide to go for the highest leverage. Some people just want it in the middle. Some don't even want leverage at all. So it's actually like dependent on the person. So you really want to select the leverage you want yourself. That is the buying power you want. But remember, just like I said earlier, it's a two-edged sword because this could also, this, this uh, margin trading concept is very sweet <laughs> when you take on trades that go in your favor. Hmm. You have a $250 account. <laughs> Don't worry, at a point you're going to learn about risk management so that you 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 not get overly joyful about this leverage and margin trading and then you go and lose all of your money just because you have the ability to trade large transaction large and um, lot size distribute to accounts capital so you're going to learn about risk management so that you can um, bring this under control your knowledge of this under control so that i don't get overly excited and then lose your one thousand dollars just because you want to trade the standard lot size you understand so let's run along out i want to try to take time okay i believe this is my last slide so um Imagine trading accounts displays the following metrics. Please listen. Imagine trading accounts displays the following metrics. We have what balance, use margin, free margin. Don't worry, I'm going to explain what all this means. Free margin, unrealized profit and loss. PL, P stands for profit, L, loss, you understand? Unrealized P, L, that's profit or loss. Then equity margin level. Now, when you start trading. Hmm? For instance, just look at this picture I have here. You see this place, the road balance, you see an amount there, equity, you see an amount there, margin, you see an amount, free margin, and margin level. Now, when you start trading, you would need the knowledge of this. I just want you to understand what all of this means. That does not mean you have to be the one to do most of these calculations we are going to talk about. You understand? Your broker does the calculation for you and displays all of this figure just like you're seeing in this picture down here. But I just want you to have the knowledge of it, understand what it entails. So let's take this, um, let's get to explain this one after the other. Balance, what does balance mean? As the word implies, the amount, your capital, whatever money you put inside, that is your balance. So for instance, you funded your account with $100. $100 is your balance, just like your account balance. You know how much is in your account right now, right? <laughs> so you know what balance is basically. Okay, so that's for balance. Used margin. So what is used margin? Now, first of all, before I explain what used margin is, I want you to know that there is something called margin requirement. That is, um, margin requirement is, it varies from broker to broker, but it's simply an amount of your capital that is required to be locked up for whatever position you want to trade. You understand? So it varies from broker to broker. Some broker have a margin requirement of 1%. That means 1% of your capital is going to be taken out and locked. It's not like it's going to be taken out, but the place is taken out to is quite invisible. You understand? But it's going to be locked out for you to be able to take um, whatever trades you want to take. That is what margin requirement is. So broker, um, different currency pairs have their margin requirements. So it's 1%, 2% margin requirements. You understand? Now, that shouldn't really bother you because I don't really put that into consideration by trading. Most people don't. 99% of traders don't. You understand it's just for the knowledge of it it's just for you to get to know it that this is what happens you understand so margin requirements so for instance you have a margin requirement or maybe you want to take a trade on euro usd and euro usd has a margin requirement of one percent it simply means one percent of your account is going to be locked out just like this place you're saying margin look at this picture closely 
you see where the wrote margin, and then you see a particular particular amount there. If, for instance, that trade you want to take now, Euro USD has a one percent margin requirement. One percent of your account is going to be locked out. It's going to be taken away. You understand, subtracted from your balance and put in a particular place. It's not like you're going to see the deduction written in your balance. So your balance will still be static as it is. But then the margin has been done. You understand? You don't get to see these things. They're invisible. That's why I said this is just for the knowledge of it. You understand? So that is what um, margin requirement is. You understand? Now, used margin is simply the margin you use. So for instance, now you have different positions opened. Um, you have different positions open. Maybe you have Euro USD, USD JPY, and then maybe Euro USD has a margin requirement of 1%. That means 1% of your account is out. Let's say, for instance, you have a $1,000 account. $1,000 account, 1% um, of $1,000 is um, how many? About how many? What is 1% of $1,000? Should that be $10 or thereabouts? I think it's the $10. So for instance, you have two trades opened. Um, one of them have a margin um, requirement of 1%. Another has a margin requirement of 2%. So when they take out the 1% of your account, which is $10 in this our example, and then another trade again, because margin, um, um, margin requirement is peculiar to each trade. You understand? Different trade has their own margin requirements and then Likewise, used margin. I'm trying to explain used margin for you. So when, when you trade, you open a position, and then you know that for every, every position you open, there is a certain amount of your account that is taken out and locked away. That is called the margin, you understand? So when you have various positions open, the combination of those margins that has been locked away is what is just called the used margin. You understand? I know I would have loved for you to get to see these things, but then it's something that we don't get to see, it's just something we get to know, you understand? That's the reason why I'm not getting to show you any practical stuff apart from this picture that I have here, you understand? Because by the time, by the time you start trading, you're going to see all of these things play out. And then that is just what used margin is. Free margin, before I explain what free margin is, I would love for you to know what equity is. Now, when you have your trade running, you are either in profit or in a loss. For instance, now you place a buy trade and then the trade is going against you. You are you're going to be in a loss. You understand? For the period that the trade is against you, you're going to be in a loss. If you're in profit, if you clicked on buy, if you took a buy transaction and the price went in your favor, you're going to be in profit. You understand? Now, I'm trying to explain what equity is because I cannot explain what free margin is without you understanding what equity is. Now, equity is the amount you have, your balance plus or minus profit and loss. You understand? Equity is simply the total of your balance plus profit or loss. You understand? So now when you have a trade running, and you are in a profit of $100. That $100, because the trade is still running, is not yet your money yet. It's just called a floating profit. You see the money running on your screen, $100. Yes, you are in profit, but because the trade is still open, it is called a floating profit. Now, at that point, your equity is going to display 1,100, 1,100 because you have a floating profit of 100. Your balance is still going to be 1,000 because the trade is still running. But at the moment you close that trade, once you close that trade, your profit will no longer be floating. It will become realized. And then your profit is added to your balance. You understand? So when your trade is running, for instance, in this example I'm using, you are in a $100 profit. Your balance is still going to be $1,000 because the trade is still open. But your equity is going to be $1,100, telling you that you are in a profit of $100. By the time you close that trade, that is when your equity and your balance will become the same. But when your trade is open, your equity and your balance is different. Your equity is simply your balance plus your profit or your loss. 
So if you are in a trade and you are in a loss of $200, your balance will be showing you $1,000. But your equity, your real equity is $800 because you are currently in a loss. Except maybe with time, price later goes in your favor and then your equity can now increase. Do you, do you understand? That is just what equity means. Equity is your balance plus, plus your profit or loss. Why your balance? Your balance is your, like, your balance is the amount you have after profit or loss. By the time you have closed that trade, whatever profit or loss you made will now be added to your balance and then the real price is going to reflect. I hope you do understand. Now, free margin. How to calculate free margin is simply equity minus used margin. Just guess the formula, you could write it out somewhere. <laughs> you just need to know it. Like I said before, you are not using this for anything. Like you don't need to calculate any of this before taking on the trade. Just like you can see, if you look at this, if you look at my screen, you can see where they wrote free margin. So when you are in a trade, when you take on a trade, you are going to see all these figures floating on your screen. It's constantly floating as long as your trade is open. So it's just for you to understand how they arrived at that value, you understand? It's not as if you need to calculate anything. Your broker will do the calculation for you. You will see these figures floating on your screen. You understand? So now free margin to get how they, just, just know that when you see free margin, how they got it is equity minus used margin. You understand? Now let's run along. Okay, unrealized profits or loss. I already explained that before. When you say something is unrealized, that means it's not yet yours. So when you have a trade open, then you have a trade open and you're in a profit or in a loss, it is unrealized. That is, it has not been added or subtracted from your account balance. So if you have a trade running and you're in a profit of $100, that is called an unrealized profit. Why? Unrealized because anything can happen. That $100 can go down to $50 or it can increase further to $200. Your trade is still open. So you still have more potentials to make more profit or more losses. Do you understand? So it's still unrealized. But by the moment you close that trade, it becomes realized and then it becomes added to your balance. Do you understand? Now, margin level. Um, what is margin level? Um, margin level um, is a point where your account gets to, and then you get notified by your trader that your account is made. It's more like a danger zone, you understand? Now, how to calculate, I will explain more about margin level, but just how to calculate margin level is um, um, equity divided by used margin times 100%. Equity over used margin times 100%. You're going to, like I said, this is just for the knowledge of it. You're going to see this floating on your screen. Your broker does all of the calculations for you. I just want you to know how they arrive at that value. You understand? So that's what margin level is. So every broker has their margin level. You understand? Meaning there is a level your account will get to that your broker is going to call you or notify you through an email telling you that, man, margin level, um, 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 me, tell you men, your account is actually in a bad condition. You understand? That is a situation where you get to get a margin call. When your account, when your margin level falls beyond a certain percentage, you get a margin call from your broker. You understand? Now, for instance, different broker have their margin call levels. Some have it at 200%, some have it at 250%, some have it at 150%. Meaning your margin level is going to be floating. But when it gets to that, their point, that point that they have set as their margin call level, you're going to get notified by them that your account is in a danger zone. That means you are in huge losses. They're going to notify you to either come and close out your trade by yourself or they'll do it for you. You understand? It's more like a warning. So that's just one margin level, it's a margin call level. You understand? So this varies from broker to broker. You understand? So when you start trading and then, unfortunately, Although that is not going to happen to you because after this program, you're not going to make some silly mistakes that a lot of newbie traders make. But then it's just for you to get to know that when your account falls to a certain point, you're going to get notified by your broker. Now you need to know what your broker margin level is. My own broker's margin level is 
So once my la margin level, my margin level can be floating to whatever amount, but once it gets to 250% and beyond, they notify you that your account is in a danger zone. So these are the basic, these are, these are the non basic, these are the metrics that you get to see displayed on your screen when you are trading. Your balance, used margin, free margin, unrealized profits and loss, equity, margin, level, and then, Okay, oh, oh, good thing. Okay, so that is actually the end of this session. So um, we're already behind time. So can, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Do you have any confusion? Please, if you do, let me see it. Let me hear you now. If you have any question, please ask me already. We're already behind time. Yes, um, if you have, if I use any term or any word that is confusing, I'm so sorry, but you're going to get, they're going to throw more light on it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, um, everything is going to be explained in details tomorrow. I just wanted you to have the basic knowledge of Forex. So it's question time. Any question, please, I'm waiting. If you have any question, let me hear you. Olawale Lampejo. All right, let me hear your question. Okay, throw more light on notional value. Now, how can we get this video? This video is going to be made available on the Telegram channel. Yeah, it's going to be made available. Although I'm not certain when, if it's tonight or tomorrow, I'm not really certain, but I'm sure that it's going to be made available. So you have no worries. You're going to be updated. Yes, every video, you're going to get every single video. So that should not bother you at all. It's going to be posted on the Telegram channel. You're going to get updated on everything. So are we going to be taught how to research and use fundamental analysis? Yes, definitely. That's the essence of this class. Yes, you're going to be taught all of those. Tonight is just the most basic, like this is the most basic it will ever be. So from tomorrow, get ready for a fire session, you understand? So you're going to be taught all of that. I just needed, I just needed you to understand the most basic concept in Forex. Can we get the materials to you? What materials are you talking about? The videos or what materials? I don't quite get your question. Now, someone asked you to throw more light on notional value. When you see notional value, it just simply denotes the unit that is traded. I talked about different lot sizes, right? And this lot size is simply is the unit of the currencies that you want to trade. So for instance, um, I told you we have three major units. We have the micro, we have the mini, and we have the standard. The micro consists of 1,000 units. So in a, in a situation where you see the notional value, simply tell you that is 1,000 because 1,000 is the quantity you want to buy. You understand? So that is the unit. That is the notional value. But if it's a standard lot, that is 100,000 units. So the notional value in that case would be 100,000. You understand? Please, that person that asked the question about notional value, do you, do you get me? I want to hear from you. Do you understand? Notional value is simply the unit traded. That is more like the quantity that you're buying or selling. Do you understand? So if it's a standard lot, is standard lot simply means 100,000 units. That means the notional value is 100,000. If it's a mini lot, that is 10,000 units, meaning the notional value is 10,000. Material used for teaching. Hmm. I really still don't understand. Materials. Like the slides, is that what you're asking? Like this slide, the slide I'm using for teaching. Example of exotic pairs. We have the likes of USD NGN, just like I said, USD dollar slash NGN, Nigerian Naira, exotic pair. We have USD MZN, US dollar to Mexico. Mexico, what, what, what is the Mexico pesos? I mean, what is their currency? But in forest, it's usually written as USD MXN. We have USD ZM. ZARO, that is US dollar to South African Rand. You understand? It's more like um, exotic pairs is just any of these 
major currencies paired with the currency of an emerging economy, just like South Africa that I, I mentioned, South African rand, we have Mexico pesos, we have um, Nigerian naira, you understand, all these emerging countries. The slides. Um, okay, I'm not certain about that, but then if it's going to be made available, it can actually be made available. Um, I will have to speak with um, the village headmaster to confirm if I am permitted to share it with you. And then if he permits me, certainly I'm going to share it with you. There is no problem. There is no issue about that at all, but I will have to seek his permission first. You understand? So any more questions? We're already behind time. Any more questions? If you understood perfectly, type two, like perfect understanding, if you understood perfectly, type two. All right, thank you, Olayemi. Thank you, if oh, it's too fast, Nito. Thank you, Akashi, Kalista, Peter, Felix. Okay, Shidima. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. TVHM, I'm so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, um, that'll be all for tonight's session. Um, I'm so glad that you all understood. So get ready for tomorrow's session. Now, tomorrow we are going to delve in deeper um, into Forex trading, you understand? So just get ready tomorrow. Make sure that you're on time, 8 p.m. prompt. So that is going to be all from me. I believe TVHM can take over from here if he has anything more to say to you all just before we end tonight's session. TVHM. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Chad Goddess, and thank you everyone for attending. It's been a brilliant moment. Tomorrow is going to be all awesome. Get set. We're going into more details of definitions. It is important that we understand these things very clearly and then know their intrinsic values. It will help us appreciate when we'll begin to draw our charts. So get set, it's an exciting moment. Tomorrow will be day three. I'm glad to have you on board. Thank you very much and have a wonderful night. Goodbye. Thank you, Dad. Good night, sir.